Cutler will highlight school district leadership and strategies and principles that help during challenging times. Specifically, um, his talk will focus on how to use these principles as well as personal and professional guidelines to navigate the many challenges of leading education on a daily basis. Participants will be asked to reflect on the numerous issues that they face in their roles and take a deep look at the strategies they use to lead each, us each day. Uh, currently serving as the superintendent for the Lake Tahoe Unified School District, he began his career as an administrator in 1998. He has served as the Dean of Students, Assistant Principal, Principal, School Improvement Analyst, Administrative Coach, Deputy Superintendent, as well as now the Superintendent. Graduating from New Mexico University with a BS in secondary education, Todd went on to earn his master's degree in, from University of Phoenix and earned his doctorate in educational leadership from Nova Southeastern University. He's in, exactly. Tyler is also. You don't need to read all that. The folks don't need to hear all <laughs> those crazy things. I do appreciate it, but I, you know, that bio is kind of long. I think that folks, if they want to learn, learn more about me, they can go to that LinkedIn bio if they'd like. Is that okay if I interrupted you? Go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I just sit there going, uh, um, we, we don't have to have all of those things. I, but I, I will say this, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate it, Xavier, ask, asking me to present today. You know, I, I, I know that most folks aren't on the screen, and I don't know if we can be on the screen. Um, but my intention today is to provide some interaction and, inter and and being able to even share with one another. So I'd love to be able to see folks and and uh, and interact with each other a little bit. Um, you know, it, when you have, and I see we have 52 people. I, honestly, Janae, they came to hear you obviously because they're dropping off as, as you've uh, been done. Um, but I'm excited to, to be able to join the group. Just really briefly about myself as Xavier is gonna do it. I, I've been, this is my 28th year in, in uh, school business. Um, What's interesting about it, I, I taught five years and then jumped right into school administration. I've been in some of the biggest school districts and some of the smallest. Uh, the biggest, I started my administrative career in Clark County School District in Las Vegas, um, you know, 315,000 students. And, and I actually served as a high school principal for a high school of 150. And if you know Nevada at all, um, Virginia City, if everybody's ever been to Reno, then up the mountain to Virginia City, I was a, my first high school principalship was there. I'm currently um, so thrilled to be the superintendent of Lake Tahoe Unified School District. So if you've been in Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe specifically, then you know where I'm coming from today. Uh, it's funny, some people were saying something about my outfit today. Well, we're actually, we had this snowstorm, very large snowstorm last week and had to be bundled up, but we're expected 50 degree temperatures this weekend. Um, so I'm like, you know, it's spring. I'm I'm putting my Easter my Easter best on today for all of you. So, uh, but I, my, my wife teased me, and just to say this to you, um, I got I went in. I said, okay, how do I look today? And she said, well, you're supposed to be wearing red. I said, well, nobody told me I'm supposed to be wearing red today. So I guess today's a day of red for some cancer awareness. So I apologize to everybody that I'm not wearing red. Um, you know, so uh, again, my my the focus today is guiding principles and leading schools and. And really it's meant to be an interactive process today to talk about some of the challenges we face and then how do we, how do we guide our work? And, and so I hope that this is gonna be beneficial for you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, but I might come in and out of sharing my screen. Um, I, I'm gonna ask you to, to you know, if you have pencil paper, um, grab some pencil and paper so that you're ready to jot down some things that I might ask you to consider and think about. All right, so let me go to share screen here for a moment. Um, so guiding principles and leading schools. Okay. Um, here we go. So, you know what, I wanted to let everybody know one thing I do and, and, and otherwise this is great. I so appreciate being able to come speak with, with counselors and, and folks that do the work. Um, I do so much, I do a lot of talking and speaking with, with, um, leaders, school leaders. One of the things I do is I'm, I want to just establish some assumptions that we make together and when we work together and, and, and that, and one of the first assumptions is when we look internally to ourselves, I can make a difference. My school, school or district can be more effective because of my efforts. And, and a lot of times folks feel, um, no matter what their role in, is that, you know, I, I don't have that effort, that, that impact. And actually every one of us as individuals have that level of impact. And, and so as we move through our present, the presentation today is really saying, hey, I can make a difference. And um, I, as my efforts so will impact what I, uh, the organization. 
my improvement is key to building a successful school and district. So then also I have to, to focus on my continuous improvement. Um, and then my improved performance and growth will have a significant impact on my school district success. One of the things that I, I'd want to share with you, and I, you know, there's the saying, there's no I in team. I, I really don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, there is an I in team and it's you. And that your effort um, on your individual effort to, to know that you're going to make a difference, that your improvement's going to make a difference. Um, and that, that, that impact is gonna impact student performance, gonna impact the, the, the schools, gonna impact the district, each individual taking that right approach. So I really wanted to share that to start with you today because that's where I focus from. My leadership and, and my folks in the district, I, you know, I presented to our entire district in August and, and I start with this. I start with saying, these are the assumptions we have to make if we're going to be an amazing organization. All right, so hopefully, and what I usually do is, is everybody with me on the assumptions? Did everybody agree to the assumptions for today's presentation? So I'm gonna virtually believe that you're putting your hand up and saying, got it, Todd, here we go. Okay, so I have a question for you. How are you doing? And really it's, how are you doing today? Um, how are things moving along for you? You feeling good? Uh, you know, how's, how's, how, how's your mental state? And I gotta ask you the, I ask you the question, and one of the things that I, why is important to me and I ask educators all the time this question, but here's the thing to think about. We interact with kids every day. And you know what? Um, sometimes when I ask the question, how are you doing? Some folks really wanna tell you. And they'll tell you, you know what? Um, the dog ate this, the, the cat did that, the wife or the husband did this. They, we go down this path of telling people and even telling our students the struggles of our day. And, and I'd say, like, to, like, and the answer I have here next is, is one of those guiding principles that I operate on every day is that, you know what, no matter what's happening in my life, no matter, even if somebody in my work world is, is creating tension or stress for me, when everybody, anybody asks me how I'm doing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you to think about this, is, you know how I, how I answer it? I'm unbelievable. I'm unbelievable. And actually, you know how I do it? I go, I'm unbelievable. It's amazing, right? Yes. And, and what's interesting um, in every organization, and I've been doing unbelievable for well over 20 years as a school leader. Um, when I ask that question, uh, you know, how are you doing? And you hear, oh, I'm good. Or, I'm fine. Um, Great, thanks. Uh, you know, there's the inconsistencies. And so I say, hey, if you're unbelievable, you can be unbelievably good. I really want to share that, that, that you know, I walk in the door and people ask me, Hey, Todd, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm unbelievable. How are you today? And it makes people laugh. It gives some like, hardness to the environment. And then, and when students ask, hey, Dr. Cutler, how are you? I'm unbelievable. And, and you know what? If something didn't happen right, or matter of fact, if a board member was on, on, on my case and making a tough day for me, you know what? It's okay. It's unbelievable. So just be thinking about that. So this next component, why is my screen not moving on? Okay, we'll try to keep this figured out. I want you to do something for me. I want I want to jot down the answers to the following questions. If, if you'll take out a, um, a, a pencil, paper. As a matter of fact, if you're open to um, when I ask, if you'll share in the chat, that'd be great as well. Um, because I, well, you know, I'm going to kind of come out of the share, and we'll maybe even have a conversation if possible. Some people want to share. Jot down the answers to the following questions. When you think about your district organization, your school, what makes you proud or excited about the work? You know, and then come up with three or four things. You know, when I think about the uh, Lake Tahoe Unified School District, I get really excited that we serve a diverse population that most folks don't necessarily know that. And, and you know, um, and that diverse population really needs us to be able to meet their differing needs. It's exciting work to think about. We've got a very um, committed staff. But you know what, we, we, got, we got some culture to build in this and that's exciting to me. So what, when you think about your district organization, what makes you proud or excited about the work? Hopefully you have a few, few things jotted. I'm gonna actually just be quiet for a second on that question so I don't interrupt. Now, if you've got some answers to that, I want you to think about the next question. What are the challenges or obstacles you face in your work to accomplish student support in your district organization or your school? What are those obstacles that yeah, frustrate you? When it, when it, you know, when you're trying to get something done and there's the obstacle, you know what, I mean, it can be anything from uh, the 
a different opinion with with the supervisor boss it could be budgetary uh, issues it can be challenging staff um, it can be you know what is it what are those things that make it hard or challenging for you and I really want us to be thinking about about that so um, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second and and the reason why I want to do that is in case anybody wants to come off screen and really think about the first question. Let's just think about the first question for a minute. Um, and is anybody that's out there want to share when you think about your organization? And you can do it, put it in the chat. And I, by the way, I haven't been following the chat. So uh, I'd ask you, Xavier, if I'm missing something in the chat, let me know. I would love for you to be sharing uh, with each other on this. Uh, when you, so like when you think about your school, your district, your organization, what makes you proud or excited about the work? Anybody willing to come off? And Janae, can I pick on you since I see you? Is there something you'd share? Well, I'm just really proud of um, shared leadership. So in my building, it's like, if I'm here or not, then there's leaders, teacher leaders, and people are um, doing the work. And I think as a district, we also have a great shared leadership culture lots of people doing amazing things and sharing ideas. Janae, thank you so much for participating like that. And, you know, that shared leadership, it really brings that collaborative spirit to an organization. Just get you really excited about that. And when we think about working for kids and we think about adults really caring about it, you, you know, you need to be able to bring people together through that. So thank you so much. Anybody else out there, and I'm not gonna force anybody, but I would just love to hear from someone. Um, I think it's just a great start for us to think about, you know, when we think about our district organization, our school, what makes us proud? You know, start there when you're thinking about things. Well, if there's nobody else that wants to jump in, I'm going to give you five seconds, five. Jump in if you'd like, four, three, two. All right, I'm going to go back to sharing again. Um, and, and I want you to hold thoughts. And, and Janae, I may pick on you again. I really appreciate it because I can see and you've been presenting, but we'll, we'll talk about sharing what are the challenges and obstacles we face um, in our work, and especially in supporting students in just a little bit, but we'll come back to that, okay? But what I really want to jump into is what are some characteristics of organizations that, um, that, that, are, that are successful? Schools, organizations, districts, and you know what? Strong leadership shared mission, vision, values, and goals. You know, when we have that alignment of those missions, visions, and values, and goals, we can really do a lot. Opportunities to collaborate and be heard. And I really think that's, you know, and Janae talked about shared leadership. Those opportunities to hear folks. They really think about what people are, that, that, um, can share with us. And that really brings in that, that shared expertise. Um, one of the things that I had a superintendent, and I use this from a superintendent of my past, is that you know, we're bright individually, but we're brilliant collectively. And so we have to bring that collective brilliance. You know, and in education, so many folks are so, so highly educated. I mean, many of us have those master's and doctorate degrees, but you know, everybody, pretty, especially in the certificated component of our, our, of our work, we have bachelors and more, right? So it's a highly educated workforce. Commitment to continuous improvement, always focusing on that not something's not just good enough, right? I always like it's not good enough, it's the good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. No, no, we're continued to commit, results oriented, and that we build trust and loyalty within ourselves. And, and you know, but there are things that, you know, stop us. There are things that stop us that we have to consider. So, what does stop us? Not clearly identifying the things that matter the most. And by the way, I'm going to do a talk uh, next week that I'll hit on briefly. I'm going to really talk about what really matters. Um, uh, most in, in as we lead and, and work with students in schools. So we'll talk about that. Oops, we gotta get this thing moving. Focusing on all the stuff that doesn't really matter. We spend a lot of time and a lot of effort on stuff that really doesn't have impact on our organization. And so we gotta clear some of that up. That's just how it is around here. So have you ever heard that? Hey, that's just how it is. And by the way, I, I really get frustrated when I hear folks say, well, that's just parents. Well, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Or that's just that situation. You know, Let's, let's dive in deeper and not just make that. That's just how we do it around here. It's always been done this way. This too shall pass. You know what? And that's like something a new leader comes in and ah, this will pass or some new program or some new idea that people get negative about. No, you know what, let's think about it. Lack of teamwork and collaboration going back to that comment that Janine talked about. 
and and some I like this one a lot because everybody said, well, we just don't have the money. And and I get really frustrated when schools and school systems say we don't have enough money. You know, I, honestly, um, I just think sometimes we don't think about our money well enough. We don't think about how to make sure the budget and where the money goes and focusing it on the needs of students and, and caring. But we use that a lot. So you know, we got to really think about that. A feeling of defeat, and that happens a lot with folks. And that's part of that unbelievable. Hey, we got to get away from feeling de uh, defeated. We got to bring unbelievable into our thinking and into the work that we do. What makes what matter happen? What makes what matters, matters happen? That's where we really need to go. And that's what I really want to be thinking about as we um, move forward. Before we get into that, let me escape real quick out of this sharing. And I want to go back. And I want you to just think about the other question I asked. What are the challenges or obstacles you face in your work to accomplish student support in your organization, your school, your district? Um, anybody willing to share some of those obstacles we face? By the way, Carly Cutler, I see you, honey. Thanks for joining today. My daughter's on. I asked her to be on and give me some critical feedback. 20, by the way, 23-year-olds can really do a good job at that. Um, anybody willing to just say some of the obstacles? So, Janae, can I pick on you again? And I so appreciate you being willing to do that. What's some of the obstacles that you, you face? So, <laughs> um, time is always an obstacle for everyone. And or perceived, or perceived lack of time. So, sometimes yeah. it's just a matter of time management. Um, and then also, um, yeah, and I think just that lack of focus or clarity around, um, you know, just sticking to what, what matters or what our, what our purpose is and kind of, you know, getting sidetracked. Yeah, that, that, that clear direction, that clear vision, that clear, clear goal. And by the way, time is such an, an issue. And so when we think about time, it creates great challenge because there's just never enough time in this work, right? Because there's always a need. There's always something that need, has to be done. And kids need us, right? It's, I mean, it's, that's never ending in, in, in their world, especially. Um, I appreciate it. I want to make sure I pause and and, uh, and by the way, Xavier, um, I hope that we're keeping folks uh, uh, engaged today. Um, that's my in interest. Again, I appreciate you being here with us. Um, anybody else want to share some of the obstacles you face? I'm seeing in the yeah. chat here. Language not having the vision as a school or, the, or vice versa. Yeah, right. So, and thank you for put, putting something in the chat. That, that struggle of that having aligned work with the families to what's going on in the school. And, and boy, the way by that's 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 so key, and and such a challenge for us. Um, so thank you. Uh, anybody else on that chat? I, I really appreciate whoever did that. Revolving door of staff coming and going. Oh my goodness, and especially in your leadership. Oh, there went another principal. Oh, there went a, you know, it's oh, it, it's that lack of consistency. I just saw another one. Did you see that, Xavier? What was that? Um, okay, maybe it was just the revolving door. Okay. Culture shakeup and. Uh, families not having the same vision as the vice uh, as the school or vice versa. Very good. Uh, revolving door. Oh, and the culture shakeup. Oh, you know, culture, such a big deal. And by the way, in my talk next week that Dave asked me to do, I think it's on February 11th at 11, I'm going to talk about culture a lot, where it's been time really thinking about, about culture. All right, let me get back to sharing the screen here. All right, where's my book? Where, there it is. So what makes matter, what, what matters happen? I just want to think about that for a second. All right. Clearly identifying and putting our energies and strength towards what matters most. And by the way, when Janae talked about time, I was thinking about this answer, right? Because we spend a lot of time on a lot of things and we have to be refined in what, it matter, what matters most. What are those things that we should spend our time in? Because it's not, there's not enough time. And a matter of fact, uh, I have an associate superintendent and and she's working all the time. And, and I'm working with her to say, okay, let's really refine because I don't wanna burn her out. I don't wanna, matter of fact, that revolving door, I don't wanna lose her. Um, so we gotta be thinking about that. And then when you think about being very clear on what matters most, it's how we use what we have. And you know, we talk about the balance of budget, but it's also the expertise of people, the expertise I have, where we, okay, it's how we use what we know. 
our skills, our talents, but the things we've learned and we've learned through process, how we use who we are. And you know, we're so unique as individuals and, and, and we have to value that uniqueness. It's how we use where we come from. You know what, we all come from different backgrounds and that's important. And it's important, matter of fact, when I think about staffing, I think about leadership and I think about people, I want people from different walks of life that they can bring those experiences to the table. It's how we use, and I can, you can, I want, I believe that is dot, 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 because you know what? We could add a lot more to it to make things happen. Now, you know what? I want to say this. Um, I just, you have somebody waiting in the, in the waiting room there, I guess. Uh, I love this big, this this little art component here, this this cartoon, and I think it really applies. And I've used it for years. And I apologize for the copy, and it's all wonky on the screen, but it really has, I think, really impactful uh, component to it. And especially now, this time during COVID, I tell you what, us educators and and, and counselors and working to to help kids feels like the world's on our shoulders and there's obstacles about that and right the world's got this COVID pandemic on us and how are we navigating that and supporting ourselves, our, our team our colleagues and specifically students the the, the challenge is, is immense and what I wanted to talk about next is that I've come up in my mind that you have to first establish some guiding principles for yourself because as we have this pressure of this world on us, first have to be really consistent about how I am. Remember I said earlier, when people say there's no I in team, there sure is. And if you can't be that I and, and, and you're staying focused and you're staying going forward, it's a struggle. So I wanna share with you um, some guiding principles that I established several years ago and really they haven't changed to help me stay focused. You know, I told you about Unbelievable is just that kind of component when people ask me how I'm doing, no matter what. But these are guiding principles. I'm going to put them on the screen that I live by every day. And I think about my daughters here today, and I always had the guiding principle of I want to be what I want to see, especially for my daughter, but for my, and as a superintendent, for my board, for my, my leaders, my principals, my, my, the, down through to the teachers, I've got to be a model. And I, we got to remember, and it's that saying, be what you want to see. That's one of Todd's guiding principles. I want to invite new thinking. We cannot continue to do what we've always done because we'll get what we've always got. And everybody knows that, that phrase, right? We've got to invite ideas. That's the wonderful thing about what Jane A said earlier, that she's working in an environment of shared collaborative spirit. You know what? We've got in that spirit, we've got to invite thinking. So I have to remind myself, but you know what? Yeah, Todd, you've done education a long time. Yeah, sure, you got all this education doctorate and, and you've been down this path and you've been in this role and, and all that you've done. I've been an elementary principal, a high school principal. I got to invite others thinking and not just mine. I got to make relationships a priority. I can never forget that people need people and that I need people. And that, that when we work with one another, that that relationship is so sensitive and can be so... Um, uh, it can crumble. It can go apart if you don't really focus on this. And then my last one, it's just always in a reminder that you can never communicate enough. And I think about transparent communication and I think being available and I think about multiple threads. And that's why I, I listed out three times, communicate, communicate, communicate. Now that's, that's mine. And I, and I share those with you. Um, interesting enough, I took our leadership team here and we have our leadership team's guidelines. And, and, uh, and, and so we also built out the guidelines and I talked to our team about, you know, I have my guidelines and you have yours. But we also, have, as a team, have to hold each other accountable for it. So what I'd like to do next with you, and I, well, this, this slide looks a little wonky, but let, let's create your personal professional guidelines. What, are, what guiding principles will you help, will, will help you with your daily work? And so I have some questions to start that. And I'd love for you to start answer. First of all, when, I, when you're thinking about your counselor, what advice would you give to a counselor that is just starting today? I think when we start to build our guidelines, that's a nice way to start thinking. You know, when you were to sit down with somebody and you say, you know, these are the things you've got to think about. Here's, here's some guidance I have for you. 
what might that be? And, and that maybe another way to start thinking about your guidance is what has been your biggest aha in your role? So that when you think about, ah, you know, by the way, as we go through our, our roles and in, in, in the world, our little cognition happens and little synopsis is hit and you go, oh, that's what, ah, that's what I needed to do with that all this time. I just, it didn't connect for me. But now that you've got the experience, I, I use those just as a couple of questions to help you think about your guidelines. And so what I'd like you to do, and I'm gonna just be quiet for a few minutes, is for you to jot down some guiding principles that you, that you could focus on. By the way, when I was a principal before I created my guiding principles, I used to have up in the corner of my office where I, I could see when I would, was dealing with a parent or a student, and it said on that, would you do this for your own children? And that was that guiding principle that before I made a decision, would it be okay for my daughters? Got a daughter here, Carly, and my oldest daughter, Cammie, they happened to be my elementary students when I was principal, so lucky. But it was really impactful because when I was making a decision that would impact students, I thought about it. Would I do this for my own children? So that was my guiding principle, one of my guiding principles back when I was a principal. Principles of principle. So I'm gonna shush for a sec and give you a moment without my interruption to hopefully, and this was a big piece I really wanted you to be able to take away today, is having something that really helps you. You know, remember the world's on our shoulders. We got a lot to accomplish. So two minutes of quiet. Again, I, it's kind of awkward in, in, in the Zoom world. When you're in a room with folks, you can look around and see how folks are doing with the activity. Um, if you don't finish this today, which obviously just a couple of minutes might not give you that same time to really create it. Um, but I'd love for it to invite you to continue after our talk today, or even when we get to the questions, um, have a little more dialogue and conversation around it. I'm, I'm kind of hoping for some dialogue conversation on my next slide, though, quite frankly. So. Uh, um, so I want you to think about is what will the what will be the result in your work and specifically the impact on students with you living your new guiding principles. When you think about establishing these guiding principles, if I lived them every day, what would be that impact? When I, and what impact will you will living your guiding principles have on you and your fellow coworkers and colleagues? See, that's something I think that we we sometimes forget about. We're so focused on our, stu our, on our students and supporting our students, which is absolutely the work, but we also are leaders and, and how we go about what we're doing has an impact. It's like that unbelievable. Well, you know what? I'm gonna be what I wanna see, even with my colleagues, because my colleagues are gonna see that I'm working hard, I'm committed, I'm, whatever it may be. I'm gonna ask folks their thinking and they're gonna be, oh, I'm valued. My wife has been an, an administrative support, administrative assistant pretty much all of her uh, adult life and so talented in doing it. But the, poor, the folks that she's worked with that discount her ability to have input, that don't ask her her thinking, she's really struggled with. But when they ask her her thinking and they value that, what a, what a difference, right? So we invite that thinking just sharing again, some of those impacts that I know that they'll have. So I'm gonna come back out as a share and just see if there's anybody willing to think about and share any of the guiding principles that you've come up with and how they will have an impact. So let me just stop sharing for a moment. And if anybody wants to come off screen, um, and we lost our, we lost my, 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 my purse, my, um, Wonderful student that was sharing. Is anybody willing to share? Come off, come off, and share a guiding principle and how they see it. It'll impact students and/or colleagues. Validate the person, even if you do not agree. Right, right. Well, it'll give validation of some of the things that I come up with. Great. Um, anybody else? I heard somebody maybe come off. Just jump in. Uh, we've got this one uh, in the chat. Leave your idea of where they should be at the door and let them start where they are. Uh, so when, you, when you're working with people, you don't have to just push your idea, right? Lo thanks for that guideline. Oh, love it. Others, please share. J jot them down in the chat or come off. I just think it's wonderful. Leave your idea at the door so that you can value and hear others. 
That's how I took it. I, I, I mean, I, I got to think about that. That's inviting the new, uh, the thinking, but maybe even that's going further and not realizing that I can't just push my thing. Anyone else? Please jump in. I love it. I've loved the share so far. Okay, well, again, I want to invite you to think about um, these guidelines, to live by them, to post them. Um, I have my guidelines posted in my office. We have our leadership team's guidelines posted in everyone's office. We post them in the boardroom. So we've, we've given them to our entire district. I've given my, my personal guideline, personal professional guidelines. We've given the entire district our district leadership guidelines. So that folks will know these are the guidelines we are gonna work from. It has such power and value. And matter of fact, I tell people, don't hesitate to call me out if I'm not living my guidelines. You know, that's, that's very powerful because if you, and, and, and I'm gonna tell you, tell your students, here's the guidelines I live by when I work with you. If you don't feel like I'm doing those, tell me. That's in that important. And by the way, they're posted right here. So you can just share, just share. I don't think Dr. Cutler, you're following that guideline. I go, oh, well, tell me more about that. Help me understand what you're, what you're seeing that I'm not doing in regards to that guideline. Cause then I can learn and remember. So the guidelines are this, this plan to help us be in alignment, to help us go in a direction together. Let me go back and share again. And this will, and I won't be coming off the share again um, on today's until we're to the question. Whew. Now the next slide, and I and I'll be sharing this next slide next week too. Um, clearly understand what really matters. What does a strong leadership bring to an organization? I think about leadership is your when you have your guidelines, when you have the, the components you're providing. We're all leaders establishing clear, positive direction. When we're working with people and we're clear on our, our own personal guidelines and we can work with them, I believe it helps create direction, right? Sometimes when you, in the bottom of the arrows there where there's no blue arrow, it's like everybody's just doing their thing. There's no kind of set of, of personal parameter of guidelines, guiding principles that we live by. But when we start to have our own personal guiding, guiding principles, and we then start to share them, we can become more in alignment together. And then when we talk and hold each other accountable for them, it gets us to the top arrow and we all start going in the same direction. Very powerful. And, and just by having people establish their personal professional guidelines and even their, their, their group, maybe it's a counseling office. You know, you have a group of three, four, five counselors with, with administrative supports and everybody coming up with their guidelines and sharing them and then saying our office guidelines, when we work with parents, students and staff are, it has this type of power to bring alignment into the work. Whew, it's really tough. It really is challenging and it's good work. I got a question before I move on to my next slide. Has anybody ever heard of tater people? Tater people. It's funny, I, I've created a culture around tater people in most of my organizations. Matter of fact, when I talk about tater people in a moment, um, I had schools that would have tater lunches and everybody would make something with taters. So I wanna share tater people with you. I'm gonna go through it a little slowly. Um, it's, it's, it's something I think is really powerful. And I think about this, life is not that simple. And I think back, back on the world on top of our shoulders that I had on that slide. It's really hard and we have all these different kinds of people. Now, I, I bet you've heard of the, the component of, you know, when we think about being positive, we think about have, living by our guidelines, it always seems like there's somebody that's trying to pull us down. Somebody that's trying to yank us back into the, the mix of negativity, the mix of, of dysfunction. You know, it's like a crab in a bucket. If you know crabs, they're climbing, they're grabbing, and they try to, and if one crab is about to climb themselves out of that bucket, one of those crabs grabs a hold of them and pulls them on down. And, and I, you've got to be aware about those crabs and what kind of crabs they are. Well, I call them taters. So I want to share with you. 
So how, and, and how do we get there as a component, right? Tater people, I, you know what? I, I'm a little disappointed because something must happen with my presentation because it usually pops up. So you get to read it with me. Some people never seem motivated to participate but are just content to watch while others do the work. They're called spectators. By the way, when we think about our guiding principles, how do we use our guiding principles to overcome those spectators? Maybe change that spectator of them. Some people never do anything to help, but are gifted at finding fault with the way others do the work. They're called commentators. Again, I want you to think about the guiding principles as we go through the tater people, because if we live by our guiding principles, maybe as we run into spectators, maybe as we run into commentators, we'll have an impact on them and it won't have an impact. Matter of fact, we'll have that component start to shift folks away from being the spectator or the commentator. Again, usually on these slides, I can pop up and I can read it and then called, but it's not happening. So I apologize. Ah, maybe it's good to do it now. Some people are very bossy and like to tell others what to do, but don't want to soil their own hands. Is anybody out there, you think in your mind, what kind of hater is that? They really don't want to get into the work, but they want to be bossy about it. They want to tell you what to do, but don't necessarily do it. Remember I said, be what you want to see. You know, as a boss, I'm not, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to join you. I'm going to be what I want to see in that work. What do you think they're called? That somebody's got it. They're called dictators. Some people are always looking to cause problems by asking others to agree with them. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's too sour, it's too sweet. Hmm. I invite that thinking. Well, tell me more about it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too sour, it's too sweet. How do we over, you know, how do we like, okay, let's talk about that. Let's, let's have a conversation, let's communicate. But you know what kind of tater that is? Anybody, anybody guess? They're called agitators. They like to agitate. They like to create tension. Hey, if we could use that collaborative spirit, we bring that interest of think, hearing their thinking, maybe we can start to eliminate that agitation. There are those who say they will help, but somehow just never get around to actually doing the promised help. You know, I talked about my wife briefly about how, you know, when she's worked with folks that don't, ask her her thinking or don't include her collaboratively. Don't, don't realize that th though she's not a doctorate or master's degree, but she's administrative support that's done it for over 30 years and has great knowledge. You know what, she's, if you don't couple her in, she probably is not gonna wanna help. Not gonna be as sold on it, right? She's, she's gonna possibly be this kind of person. Again, the guiding principles help us work through that. They're called hesitators. Well, hesitation. I'm not sure I really want to get involved with this, but those guiding principles can help apply that. Some people can put up a front and pretend to be someone they're not. Now, I hope you're getting the hang of this. Maybe you've got this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this tater. Anybody want to throw something in the chat? And Xavier, you could check, see if anybody's got that tater, see if we got the role before I uncover. Nobody? All right. We got a shy group today. I, you know, sometimes counselors are, are, are that. They're called imitators. I just, I think somebody put something in the chat. <laughs> Did somebody get it? <laughs> Very good. Imitators. Great. Then there are those who love others and do what they say they will. They're always prepared to stop whatever they're doing and lend a helping hand bring real sunshine into the lives of others. Now, I gotta tell you, I never even knew that was, from my childhood, you know, you, you ate meat and potatoes, but you didn't have these types of potatoes. My mother just wasn't an amazing cook. Don't tell her I sold some Carly, don't you tell grandma. But I tell you what, my wife makes these all the time and she may, puts a smile on my face. They're called sweet taters. What type of tater do you want to be? And what type of tater do you want to help lead folks to be? And how do you lead them? And how do you support them? Whether it be working with your colleagues, um, you're working with families, students, student groups, parents, 
it's 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 hard and it, it's easy to fall into those other types of taters. It really is. It's easy to do that, but we have to think about having our guidelines established. And that's why I say, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know, when I get a smile on people's face because I want to be a sweet tater. And yeah, it's tough sometimes. I'll go down a path. And I think about my guidelines. That brings me, it grounds me and brings me back to where I need to be. You know, over the years that I've used tater people, I've also created a new tater people, another tater concept. And I think that when we think about our the principles I've given today, we've had the principle of being unbelievable, the guiding principle, personal guiding principles. You think about sweet taters. These are those principles that, you know, if we apply them on a daily basis, we're going to be so amazing with our, our, our teams and our, and our students. But you know what? You have to have this tater. There are also those that understand the importance of accountability and doing the job fully all the time. They're committed to the team and do their continuous improvement. Remember, my improvement will make a difference. They understand being held to high expectations and have the same expectations for those around them. Does anybody know what kind of tater that is? They are called expectors. You know, it's funny. So I've done all these tater people. And last year, I added another tater person that's not in, in, in this presentation today. But it's called a quarantator. Boy, I tell you what, COVID has just provided us an amazing different world. And sometimes having to be a quarantator in quarantine, you sometimes it will struggle also with being a sweet tater and an expectator um, and having to learn this new world. But uh, I want to challenge us to think about our guiding principles, to think about how we go about the work that we do, how we how we make every day. And, and I'm talking to, I'm preaching to a group of people that are when counselors, they're, you're in it because you care about people. You're in it because you care about making a difference for, in the lives of people. And I just want to thank you for doing that because it's a special role. It's a special job. It's an important one. And I'm thrilled that I get the opportunity every day to do the work I do, and I'm sure you do as well. So that's my presentation today. Thank you for all you've done and will do to make your school, your district great. My information's on there, and I thought about when Janae was uh, uh, presenting, I should have my, my Twitter handle, which is at Dr. Todd Cutler. Um, you follow me there. Uh, I, I, I'm on LinkedIn. That's how Xavier got, got with me. Um, I want to invite you to, to call. My, that's my cell number if you'd ever like to call me. Text me. That's my personal email, Dr. Todd Cutler, yahoo.com. And then my, um, my uh, work email is tcutler at ltusd.org. Um, with that, uh, Xavier, that's my presentation today. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I, I'll leave it up there just a second longer if anybody wants to write that down. Um, again, my handle at, uh, on Twitter is at Dr. Todd Cutler. Um, you can find me there. I, you know, I, I, most of the work I do is just sharing some positive stuff here and there and, and uh, engaging about the things that I believe in um, in regards to leadership, school leadership. So with that, uh, let me stop sharing screen and answer any questions you might have of me today. Um, I appreciate uh, being, being part of this and, and really feel very thankful to have had the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Todd, so much. Uh, make sure to drop your uh, questions in the chat box right now. I did see one from earlier. Um, so it's on a, a little bit of an earlier topic, but you're talking about different things to increase your support. Uh, and what was something that you have done differently uh, now to increase your support during COVID-19 for uh, your, your work? What have I done differently to, to increase um, the support of the organization and my support? Um, let me make sure I understand. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what they meant. Well, you know, let me say, speak from a two different directions. You know what? This has been a hard time, right? Um, I, I think about it and... and when I share this and, and I'm pick on my daughter who's on the screen here is, you know, um, she was senior playing college softball last March and having a great final senior season. And all of a sudden it shut down and, and she was home and her, her senior year was done and, and, and hard. And this was hard for us to have kids just disappear really from us and be at home and trying to figure out how to, how to navigate that. And so first and foremost, I think you have to have some self care and take care of yourself, right? Because there's a lot of pressure um, on all of us and pressure on a superintendent, 
pressure on students, pressure on everybody. Um, and we want to do such good stuff. I know as counselors, as school leaders, want to do such good stuff. And if we don't take care of ourselves first, I, I think that's important. Um, I know that I've had to work through that, and, and, and I've actually had some health components uh, this past year, and, and I needed to get myself back in shape. And, and, and so first and foremost, I think you've got to really focus on on your, your health and your consistency with that. So that it's kind of that unbelievable to start. Um, I think then understanding that we're navigating a really crazy time that we don't have answers to. And, and, and I gotta tell you, I get such criticism from you know, all directions on what we do as school leaders. Um, and, and I think that we have to give ourselves patience um, and, and, and not get too, too, too upset or, or excited when, when things aren't necessarily going right or things, you know, or, 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 or something changes. I mean, I mean, in California, it seems that we, what, what the guidelines were in the su summer have changed to now and, 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 and everything's just been different. And so I think that I've had to make sure that I stress patience. And when I work with our teams is, is being very calm. I, I hope that Xavier may have answered that question. I'm not sure. I love that never look at taters the same way again. Cool, thank you. I actually have my own uh, question, Todd. Uh, while I was writing uh, your bio, I couldn't help but notice that you were actually the mayor of a city, uh, Nevada. And I was just wondering, do you use the same leadership principles uh, you do in your current work as you did uh, even that? I mean, you know what, and I was the mayor of Fernley, Nevada um, back uh, 2006 through nine. I'm actually left it a little early because of my education job that got not funded anymore, so I had to move on. Um, but I'm going to tell you this, absolutely. You know, in my mind, um, no matter what the role you're in, leadership is, is leadership. And, and actually, I think, all, I think in my mind, we're all leaders, you know, um, and we all have that opportunity because what leadership does is, is it has a, an impact on people. And, and, uh, and so use the same kind of ideas and thoughts and processes back when I was a mayor. Very difficult though. I mean, because, I mean, all of these components are difficult. When you're a mayor and you're elected official and you're dealing with the community at large, it's, it's a different dynamic than necessarily a common thinking of a, 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 in education though. Common isn't always common, right? So, um, but the, I, I, yeah, the same pieces. And, and you know, when I have, uh, as you've invited me next week to present uh, February 11th, I think at 11, um, I'm gonna talk a lot about some elements of leadership that have been part of my world's, you know, and we talk about culture and communication. Um, and we'll really get into some things about how those impact organizations, impact the city, um, uh, impact small parts of organization, larger parts. So I, it all really applies in my thoughts. Hey, that was a uh, great word. Currently we have a musical guest uh, queued up who is going to be performing in about, uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, we have a few more questions, however, to get, uh, to get through. Uh, so thank you, Todd. Uh, I have, I just saw another one and it is um, what, um, so you, so throughout your career, you probably had to deal with many different uh, committees, different uh, parts where you're getting advice from or information from or orders from. Uh, where have you been, how have you been able to balance all of that uh, and still convey the same message or still stand for the same things? Well, I think I I'll take it as, as, and I just talked about lots of lots of opinions in the work that we do, right? Lots of ways we, that people can get at the work, and and so, um, and I think we go back to part of that first, you know, piece that Janae talked about, um, that hey, I, I I feel very lucky to be in a shared leadership component and people giving their ideas. I, what's really challenging is that when you build that and you get a lot of ideas, then how do we refine that down to? Um, solutions and, and decisions. Very difficult, challenging component. And I think that as a facilitator of conversations, and, and, and I, I'll tell you, um, and for those out there that are you know, cognitive coaches, cognitively trained on how to guide conversation, really is very challenging to bring those ideas into um, where people can, can, in essence, agree. And I have a system that I use uh, that we talk, it's, it's called dialogue discussion and decision making. And we think about, we, we start big and we start to funnel down. 
Um, and I use that system to get to finally um, all of these different ideas out there and all of these different um, pushing and pressures that we have to get, it, I use that system. And, and, and it's just a lot longer, longer answer, I think, from that point. But it's being able to, to take in everybody's thinking, to be able to use a very effective paraphrasing and summarizing and getting people's thinking to be then together. Um, you know, there's a question about uh, this, the, the Tater people. I did, uh, Xavier put a PDF of the presentation in what you uh, shared, for me, so I'm not sure how everybody gets to that. Uh, yeah, I can share the uh, link again. Uh, thank you, Todd. Is there anything else uh, you want to add? Um, you know what, I just, talk? let me just thank every, you know what, uh, is this Counselor uh, Appreciation Week or whatever the term is, you know, I speak, every day we should be appreciating the work that you do and, and uh, so appreciate everybody Thanks for having me today. I always, always love to be have the, have these opportunities to share some of my thoughts and share some of my little tidbits that I've gained over the years. And thank you so much, Todd.